Alan Stevenson's burlesque for double bass and small orchestra. The orchestration is quite sympathetic, should I say. It's with strings, a flute, doubling on piccolo, clarinet and bassoon. But before I talk to you about the piece itself, I want to tell you a little bit about the composer. Alan Stevenson was born in Wallasey on Merseyside. And I think of him as a South African composer, even though he's British born. He went to South Africa in 1973, when he and his wife were both offered jobs in the Cape Town Symphony Orchestra. And it's whilst he was in Cape Town that his career as a composer and a conductor and a cellist really took off. When I read the notes that he wrote for my recording of this piece, which I did for Meridian Records, he talks about his relationship to the double bass and how it started. And of course, it starts with Zoltan Kovacs, who was the principal double bass in the Cape Town Symphony Orchestra in 1973, when Alan arrived. And Zoltan was also my teacher. And Alan says that it was Zoltan who explained to him the mysteries of the, the double bass, solo tuning and all the other vagaries. And he wrote this burlesque based upon his understanding of the bass as explained to him by Zoltan. But the piece has an interesting history because Zoltan never played it. And when I left South Africa in 1982 to come to the United Kingdom, Alan Stevenson gave me a handwritten copy of the score. I took it with me and I looked at it every now and again, but there was something about it that didn't work in my estimation. In the cadenza, there were passages which required the double bass to accompany the clarinet in very complicated figurations, and I thought it wouldn't work. At least then, 20 years, actually it wasn't. Uh, in the early 80s, I thought it didn't work. And I wrote to Alan to ask whether he would consider revising that little bit of the cadenza. And nothing happened for years. And eventually, through my letterbox came a score, a revised burlesque for double bass. And I then set about preparing it for performance. And I gave the first performance in Berkhamstead, not far from where I live, with the Bridgewater Symphonia conducted by Adrian Davis. And I'm happy to say that the piece works fantastically well. Alan was delighted that the piece finally had a performance and he wrote some more music for me. So his journey with the double bass did not finish with the burlesque, but he also wrote a concerto for me in 2005 and also a sonatina for double bass with cello. And also there's a little piece which was a commission in South Africa from the South African Music Rights Organization called Some Thoughts on African Beer for Solo Double Bass. So Alan Stevenson's understanding the bass is quite well developed. But I have to say he started pretty well at the beginning. I met Alan Stevenson at the University of Cape Town because he auditioned me when I went there as a cellist. And also he was conductor of the University Symphony Orchestra, of which I was principal bass. And he was a very generous man, a very generous musician. He basically taught me the standard repertoire. And also, he gave me opportunities to perform concertos with the orchestra. For that, I will always be eternally grateful. It was a very important part of my journey. But now to come to the burlesque itself. What is a burlesque? It's in essence a dramatic or musical work intended to cause laughter by caricaturing the manner or spirit of serious works. And Alan does this very well with the burlesque, caricaturing its capabilities, but also highlighting the possibilities for the instrument. And what I like very much about the way Alan writes is that he was never seduced by atonality. His music is gratifying to perform and exciting to listen to. And the burlesque is no exception. Now to think about what the burlesque does. What are the aspects of the bass that it deals with? And I was surprised when I began to look in detail what it does. So the things that you will encounter throughout the burlesque include the following. Open strings, string crossing, harmonics, portamento, glissando, double stops, grace notes, cantabile, diversity of rhythm, syncopations, amongst other things, a catalogue of bow strokes, staccato, legato, accents, a little bit of jazz, and then, of course, the element of virtuosity. There's a cadenza in this piece, which encapsulates all those technical and musical ingredients. The piece lasts probably in the vicinity of nine minutes, and it's incredible how much is covered in this. 
And the way I look upon this burlesque is like the double bass equivalent of Benjamin Britten's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. Benjamin Britten navigates the instruments of the orchestra and the burlesque navigates the capabilities of the double bass. So the very first thing I want to look at is the opening of the burlesque, an anacrusis, an upbeat. The very opening of the piece, an anacrusis, an upbeat, and complex string crossing. So to show you what I mean about this opening and the challenge that you have, it's kind of the signature tune of the bass, the four open strings. And Alan encapsulates this into the music and it becomes a feature of the piece. It returns many times. So just listen again, the string crossing. So that's the first thing that you will encounter, string crossing. The dynamic most definitely is forte at the opening. So it's a question of not just being able to master the string crossing, but also control the dynamic. So contact point is important. Where will the thing speak very well? How much do you have to play for the pianist or your orchestra to know that you've started? A really positive beginning. So that is the very first thing that you play in the burlesque. Four open strings in fourths. It's a curious kind of sound. And then Alan continues uh, to give the, the double bass a little bit of running around. And groups of semiquavers, but not necessarily in four. So this is what I meant when I said that he deals with the question of rhythmic complexity, almost straight away. After four semiquavers in a line, so that you then group them into three. And then, before long, you, he introduces triplets. And that signals the ritornello for the orchestra. A tutti which plays with this material that we've already heard. And the tempo marking is crotched equals 104. Allegro. But what I also meant to tell you was that Adam Stevenson not only retained the elements of rhythm and harmony in his composition, he also retained the element of traditional structure. So this piece is sort of in sonata form. And we're now in the exposition. But the exposition is complex and it has different ingredients. By the time we get to bar 27, we now move into Allegro Molto, crotchet equals 144. But again, he uses the open strings in an extraordinary manner. So crotchets and quavers, but we have a tune but based on the open strings, one. And then, bass. A little bit of melody, but quite straightforward, but staying in time. And then he introduced the quavers again, as the anacrusis, three notes this time. And this, becomes a feature of this Allegro Malta at 144 beats per minute. The three note anacrusis with an accent at the beginning. And then syncopation gets introduced. Syncopation, what is the definition of syncopation? And I think it's worth knowing. And the reason I keep asking you the definition of particular terms is because Success in interpretation depends upon a reliable mental representation. If we know what a burlesque is, we're already halfway there. If we know what string crossing is meant to do, if we know what staccato means, if we know the definition of every term, everything we're dealing with, then we can actually realize these things much more effectively. As instrumentalists, I think it's important to realize that good intentions are not always sufficient. Good intentions have to be coupled with intellectual understanding and also an aesthetic aspiration. <laughs>